Hey guys, it's me, Julian Greystoke. Today I'm wearing my Make Art Not War shirt. We're going to talk about something a little bit different than I normally talk about here. We are going to talk about a play. This play is called Mr. Burns, and it is by Anne Washburn. Now, some of you may have realized, because I won't shut up about it on my social media, that I was in a play recently. In fact, we just finished our performance last night, sold out, which wasn't terribly impressive because we do small black box theater, so selling out isn't as hard. But we did sell out, and it was great, and obviously we performed this play, and I wanted to wait until after I was finished performing it to do a review of it. A little bit of background, I have been acting for over 13 years, stage acting with a small organic theater company called Rebel Alliance Theater. We do a lot of smaller shows, a lot of thoughtful shows, a lot of emotional shows, that kind of thing. And if you ever have any interest in me talking about what we're about, my acting experience, that kind of thing, feel free to let me know. We are a very small company and we are just a group that's just trying to get theater in when we can in our adult lives. So right now we're putting on like one show a year. Would I love to do more? Of course. Do I have time to do more? Not really. So let's talk about Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns is a really interesting play. It is about a group of people after the apocalypse. It's a post-apocalyptic play. Something has happened that has destroyed at least the United States of America. And the survivors have come together and they are bonding over remembering old Simpsons TV episodes. And eventually they become a theater company that performs Simpsons TV episodes on stage. So it's basically about them, how they meet, their per their rehearsal, and eventually the there are three acts in this play. It's only in one scene per act, and it takes place uh, set in the very near future, which is Act 1, where the characters meet. Act 2 is seven years after that, and then Act 3 is 75 years after that. So Act 3 is very different, and it is when most of our original characters are probably dead, and then we are sort of playing at new characters who are putting on a performance of The Simpsons that has become something deeply different from what The Simpsons were. So it is, it is a play about nostalgia, it is a play about the transformation of art, there's a lot of things going on in this play. Let's talk about what I liked first, because, you know, it's gonna be stuff that I didn't like. I like the themes in this play. It's very interesting to discuss about uh, the transformation of art, how certain themes will always seem to rise to the surface. The importance of theater, the importance of community and having a group to survive. There's a lot of stuff going on in this play that I really liked and appreciated. I also will say that the overall like storytelling from an authorial standpoint I found to be pretty good. In the first scene I feel that the playwright does an excellent job of introducing the characters and the scenario without just telling you things about them. It feels pretty organic the way the characters interact, the way they introduce themselves. The first scene has a new person coming into this camp that has recently formed of the characters and how they react to that, how they meet this new person. Also, we get to find out what the Simpsons mean to them at this point and how it's sort of bringing them together as people. And I like the way that the playwright handles all of this very deftly with all show and very little tell which for a play is especially important. I could definitely take a lesson from this playwright in how she introduces things and makes you understand the world without ever having to blanketly tell you what's going on. I also appreciate the way that she structures her scenes where she makes sure that you have quieter moments as well as large emotional moments. She understands that it can't be all quiet and it can't be all intense and I feel like she has a good flow of the quiet and the intensity to really let you get to know these characters and this world in a short span of time. And of course, I am very intrigued by what happens with The Simpsons over the years that this play takes place because obviously these stories change drastically by the 75 years down the line mark. I might think of more things that I like about this 
later. I do like the characters, although that might be deeply linked to the people who played them for me, because obviously I was on stage with my fellow actors being these characters. Oh, I played Colleen, by the way, if you're wondering. She doesn't have any lines in the first act, she's just kind of recently come to the camp and she's more of an observer, but in the second act she has become sort of the director slash stage manager of their little theater company so it's very cool i enjoyed playing her we had a lot in common in our styles and the way that we handle like trauma and that kind of thing i really think a lot of us had the opportunity in this play to play characters that were close to ourselves which is good and bad and mostly i'm not going to talk too much about that because i mostly want to talk about the play itself but there are advantages and disadvantages to having a character who is very close to who you are as a real person, as I'm sure you can imagine. So, what are some things that I didn't love about this play? Uh, as an actor, these lines are incredibly difficult to memorize. Because this playwright wrote them in the way that people speak, it is, uh, it's very difficult. One of the, my fellow actors, Casey, he counted, he played Matt, and he counted one of his lines had perhaps seven instances of the word like in it. This playwright writes in a very distinctive manner to get across how people would actually be speaking to one another, but it makes these lines incredibly difficult to memorize and frustrating to memorize because you're stopping, you're starting, you're having different thoughts in the middle. You say like 80 million times. Some of your lines are nearly identical. I had that same problem too. This playwright also had a very interesting relationship with punctuation. So only sometimes would she remember that punctuation exists. Sometimes her, her lines would be well punctuated, sometimes they would be over punctuated, and sometimes there would be an entire monologue with no punctuation at all. And that, again, frustrating for an actor. Just saying, lady. Now, act three of this play is bonkers, and I encourage you to go read it because I cannot even describe it to you. But act three of this is quite difficult to stage, especially if you're a smaller group like us. So that was a real challenge. Also, there was a lot more singing and music in this play than we anticipated, which my theater group does not do musicals. We might be one of the only theater groups out there that intentionally we do not do musicals. Comedies, dramas, whatever, not musicals. So. I don't think any of us were quite prepared, like we knew that there was going to be some singing and some music in this play because music is also a part of the culture that this playwright is like bringing forward into the future and it's cool, but at the same time we did not, I don't think, completely grasp how much music was going to be involved, how much original music we were going to be required to write ourselves. Thank goodness. Some of our actors have a musical experience, <laughs> me not being one of them. I can sing, but I have no musical training whatsoever, and my character doesn't really sing anyway. Boy, were we not prepared for that. And I feel like the beginning of this play is so music-free, and then especially when you get to Act 3, it just suddenly becomes everybody's singing, and I hated that. <laughs> Why is, I, I kind of understand why, but at the same time I don't understand why that had to happen. <laughs> no, did not want. One of our overall biggest complaints about this play is that while it is clear that some sort of apocalypse has happened, and it has struck the entire United States, we never really find out about the rest of the world, but if the United States is left alone to, to make silly plays, 75 years later, I think it may have happened to the rest of the world too, but it is completely unclear. All that we know is it had something to do with nuclear power at some point. But we researched it a lot and we went through a lot of searching and studying and we as actors could not find a way that the nuclear power plants like having issues would be the sole reason that essentially the United States was destroyed. So we came to the conclusion that it may have been a sort of clusterfuck of multiple things. Fires are mentioned, so wildfires going out of control coupled with possibly a disease, coupled with possibly a dirty bomb, coupled with possibly nuclear plants going up. All of it would have kind of had to happen at once 
for this play to make sense. And this is a big problem with a lot of post-apocalypse stories where you're just meant to understand that everything was somehow destroyed don't ask questions. It really felt very much like a zombie apocalypse in that way, even though there were no zombies. I know, I was disappointed too. In that, in a zombie apocalypse, you're not really supposed to question why we don't just kill all the zombies very easily with our, you know, military, because we would. So that is a big complaint if you are looking for, as we were, because we wanted to understand what had happened to our characters, if you are looking for that explanation, you will not find it in here. The apocalypse itself and what happened is not really supposed to be the most important part of this play, even though there is a lot of themes about nuclear power and nuclear waste and a radiation in this play, you're not really supposed to know what exactly happened, which we found fairly frustrating when we were trying to figure this stuff out. And the final thing that was pretty obnoxious is this version of the play that we all purchased for rehearsal is not the final version. But to obtain the final version, you have to buy the rights to perform the play, which of course we did, obviously, but we didn't do it right away when we started rehearsing because we figured this was the def like the final version. This was the most recent version, so why wouldn't it be? So we were rehearsing, rehearsing, and you know we figured out when we wanted to put up our show, and so that our director went to purchase the rights, only to receive a whole bunch of changes after we had already been rehearsing, and changes that were pretty frustrating, especially to us because one of the big frustrating factors of putting on this play is the music. The playwright uses actual songs and lyrics from actual songs within this play, so we were trying to figure out ways to work around those things, as well as the fact that the Simpsons characters are very blatantly mentioned, name-dropped, used within this play. And so we were going ahead kind of assuming that the author had figured out something that would allow this to happen. O uh, only to find out that no, and the changes that she made were to kind of cover her own butt for the copyright issues for, like the music, for especially the Simpsons characters because Fox like came after her I'm pretty sure. And so in the third act, originally it was supposed to resemble the Simpsons a lot more physically, but it turned out that we could not now have any resemblance to the Simpsons. The characters had to look nothing like them. Even though we could still use the Simpsons names, the characters in the third act could no longer look anything like the Simpsons, which was annoying because we'd already made several masks that were, you know, to put up to be the Simpsons characters that we had to scrap. It was, it was pretty frustrating, and I do not know why you have to wait to buy the rights to this play to get the final version of this play. Very annoying. And she also put in a bunch of like editorial stuff that was not terribly helpful to us. It was very random and very frustrating that you apparently cannot just purchase the definitive version of this play to rehearse with. You have to have paid for the rights to get the actual version. Don't love it. Don't love all of this copyright stuff. I know of... We had to change our poster because you had to submit it to like Fox to make sure that it didn't even vaguely resemble The Simpsons, so we our poster ended up being really abstract because we couldn't figure out how to make it clear that this was like a Simpson a play about The Simpsons, look at this, but somehow not have The Simpsons involved anywhere in it, visually. Wow, was that annoying. <laughs> a very interesting thing, especially when at the same time that we're putting up this play, we're seeing news coming out about a high school that put on a production of Alien, which they literally stole wholesale from the movie, and that was fine with everyone apparently, but we were really having to scramble to cover our butts to make sure that there were no copyrighted materials in our performance, in our tiny little performance of Mr. Burns, a play that was written for people to perform that has The Simpsons in it. I'm a little bit salty about that. I still really like this play, and I'm not necessarily super salty with Anne Washburn 
because I really think that she should be able to make a play like this and maybe the characters could have some resemblance to The Simpsons, but apparently that is a no-no. So that was a really big annoying thing about it. I know other theater companies have also struggled with this, with the music thing, with all of it, so it's a frustrating play to try to perform. Just if anybody is thinking about performing this, know that going in. There's a lot of restrictions, it's a frustrating play. From that angle, I think it's a it's a, a really interesting play to perform, and it says a lot, but from the angle of performance, it's a frustrating play. If I was you, I would get it and read it, because it is very interesting, and I do love all of the stuff that was going on within it. Go see a performance of it if you can, see what they're doing, and what they're getting away with sneakily, like did they put The Simpsons on their poster and like not tell anyone, because I, yeah. That's fair. Comment below and let me know if you have ever heard of this play, if this intrigues you, what you think of all of the copyright stuff that I just bitched about. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is going to be going on my play shelf now. I've got a shelf of all plays that I've been in and some other plays that I've collected. So that'll be great and I really had a great experience being in this. I love acting and I'm sad that I don't get to do it more often. But boy was that exhausting. I didn't get anything else done. Everyone's waiting for the read-along, and it's been so long because I've been literally going uh, work, rehearse, sleep, work, rehearse, sleep. If you liked what you saw here and you want to see more reviews of things, not necessarily plays, but definitely books, there's lots more content on this channel, and I post new videos Mondays and Fridays right here. If you wish what you saw was higher quality, you can support me on Patreon, where all your donations go to helping getting me better equipment and just making sure that this show can keep going without having to bite into my and my husband's actual accounts which my husband is very grateful for, thank you. And if you become my patron, you also get to see a lot of exclusive videos that are not seen anywhere else. So definitely go check those out, including mini read-alongs, bookshelf tours, all kinds of fun stuff. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking, and I'll see you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Well, hey there, it's time for this month's patrons. That's right, it's shout-out time for Lennox, Amanda, Celia, Jenny, Kim, Lisa, Lamour, Sabby Panda, Sam, and Sarah. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I really, really appreciate you all.